So you guys, two years of Miata. I apologize the car being so dirty, the antenna fell out, and I just have it plugged with a rag so I can't wash it until I get another antenna. But let's cue the dirty edit. Alright you guys, so this is my 1991 Mazda Miata BRG and I've owned it for two years now. About, I'd say two years and like three months ago, my Honda Civic hatchback got totaled, that was a 95. And uh, I got paid out by insurance because another driver hit me, my car was parked. I wasn't even in the car, so they, they claimed immediate fault and I got paid for it. And I decided to pick up this instead of another Honda Civic. I was actually looking for another Civic, but couldn't find any good ones and ended up going with this. So, it has 138,000 miles, let me double check, 139,000 now, and I bought it around 126,000, my friend Tim actually drove me up to LA, and we picked it up from a guy up there, it is pretty beat, I mean it's old, it's a 91, with you know 130,000 miles, it's got dents, dings, a little bit of bacon fender up there, interior's got some rashes, some stains, but uh, I really do like the car. It's uh, super enjoyable to drive and it's been a really good experience having owned it for two years. Uh, real quick, I just want to go over the mods I have on it. It has some Rota MSR, I think they're called, rims. They're reps, I, I don't, it doesn't really matter. Real Rotas. <laughs> and then it has a front lip, show that. Uh, chrome gas cap on it. The OEM hardtop, not really a mod, but it's there. And bigger sway bars, auto zone brakes. Uh, the best of the best for me. Then it has a Jackson Racing cold air intake and a Racing Beat exhaust a stock header though. And uh, I'll go ahead and give you guys a tour of it real quick and talk about some of the issues I've been having. They're not that big of issues, but we'll get into it. So starting off here in the back, I got rid of the luggage rack. You can see the where it used to be right there. I ended up selling it on the SoCal Miata parts for sale page and cars for sale. And I ended up getting a really good price for it compared to what I bought it for, taking that it was used. And I just didn't use it as much as I thought. It did go good with the chrome look, kind of vintage look, but uh, it looks kind of more streamlined like this. And might as well make a couple dollars and change up the look if I'm not gonna use it that much. And then like I showed in the beginning of the video, I can't wash the car because this gaping hole is like right above the battery. The battery's like right around here in the back of Miata's. So, Got to fix that, just pick up another antenna. I was kind of waiting until I can go to the pick apart junkyard and just pull one off of me out of there. Or maybe I'll just order one online. Or my friend Tim's helping me 3D print a plug and uh, I'll see how that looks on it. So out of nowhere, I basically started having really high oil pressures. Like right when you started up, you'd be pegging at 90. And even when it fully warmed up at idle, it'd still be at 60 PSI. And that's just really abnormal for my car. It was usually at 30 at idle when warmed up and 60 while gunning it, maybe 70 if you're in the really high RPMs. And that was just kind of weird to me, and then it started having problems where it wouldn't start. Went to AutoZone, tried to test the battery, they said it was good. And then we started it a few times, and I brought it back in, uh, and they said it was bad. So it was just draining really quick. And I ended up picking a new one for $140, kind of a lot for how small the battery is in these cars. But it's a Duralast gold one. We'll see how long it lasts. But, you know, AutoZone has a really good warranty, so I'm not really worried about it. And then it wouldn't start the other day. I went over to my, I was trying to go over to my grandma's house, and I ended up having to take the Civic over there. 
and it wouldn't start so I was just I just left it and then you know the next day I decided to go and check on it and it actually turned out to be the ground in the trunk I think it's the ground for the starter and it turns out that's why the oil pressure was kind of reading wrong it didn't have a good enough ground to be reading correctly and I'll show you guys which one it is in here it is this one right here all of these were loose I think that's the starter ground the one with the exposed wires right there and then just this whole assembly was loose so that was why I was reading wrong coming into the interior like I said you know it's got some blemishes it's still dirty because I didn't if I can't clean the outside I don't want to clean the inside right now and I'll go ahead and show you guys the miles if it focuses 139,000 right there and everything it's still I picked up these formats of the junkyard I think that showed I showed that in a video they're OEM Mazda ones but they're black not tan I think it offsets it a little bit better I like having a little bit of black inside the all tan interior and it does have this bar which I think started putting them in in 94 but the previous owner put this in so that's cool uh, stock steering wheel with a destroyed cover for it so, and the original steering wheel is destroyed too so <laughs> gotta pick up a new steering wheel cover soon I would go to like a wood grain if this is my weekend car but as this is my daily uh, I kind of want to keep the airbag just to be safe you never know and uh, I like just playing it safe with that kind of stuff Engine bay, same as last year's one year basically. The Jackson Racing cold air intake, which sucks air from the little crack in the hood and in front of the radiator, I guess it pulls up some. And yeah, strut bar, stock headers that lead to the uh, Racing V cap back, the broken dipstick as on all Miatas, and still no plastic headlight shrouds. I really need to get those and quit playing around. <laughs> uh, OEM radiator on this, and yeah, this headlight, I fixed it so it looks better when flush, but now when you try and bring it up, it gets stuck. And you have to come out here and use the this thing to make it go up, which is kind of annoying. So I need to adjust that again and get it to where it comes up easily. Yeah, the problems have been kind of small lately, uh, like the ground issue. I'm not very good with electrical, so like tracing that stuff down, I have no idea. And I talk to my dad a lot and he helps me. So thank you for that, dad and just finding those little issues it's not that big of a deal like the oil pressure kind of scared me i was like what is going on it's like they're clogging the line or somewhere or did i use like the wrong type of filter or like is the oil bad i don't know there's a lot of things running through my mind and it just turned out to be that little ground uh just overthinking things and uh it's just always good to go to the basics and check you know start checking things off a checklist and you'll eventually find what's wrong this car is decently easy to work on uh I wouldn't say it's easy to hunt a Civic front wheel drive just because how much more room it has in the engine bay. Some of the stuff's kind of like tucked under in these cars. Uh, for example, a slave cylinder on a Civic is way easier than this. But if you're a beginner mechanic, you could easily figure this stuff out. Uh, there's lots of guides online. Uh, the help manuals, uh, like the Haynes manual and that kind of stuff, super helpful. Uh, so this is a really good beginner's car, to be honest. If you want to learn to work on your car, have a fun, sporty, cheap, affordable sports car. I think this is the best affordable sports car that there is has been ever made uh, in terms of reliability, decent gas mileage, and just overall fun to drive, uh, low maintenance, lower insurance than most sports cars, and because of the low engine liter size and that kind of stuff. But really great overall experience, driving experience, owner experience, and uh, community experience too. There's lots of helpful people, lots of knowledgeable people in this scene, people doing crazy builds, off-road builds, uh, drag builds, drift builds, streetcar, toge builds, canyon carvers you can do anything with this car pretty much uh like i said any type of motorsports full-on race cars spec miata they're just unlimited things you can do with the miata i think it's the greatest affordable sports car of all time to be honest so two years of owning it and uh hopefully many more maybe one day K k24 swap that's what i really want to do with it and what well, i'd have to have another daily obviously because that would be quite the adventure and quite the expensive venture to go on and need a garage to do the swap so we're talking years down the line but that would be a really cool thing to see i want to keep this car to the point where i can do that thank you guys if you made it this far and uh leave a like if you did enjoy please subscribe if you want to see some more miata videos recommend anything you want to hear about the miata or want me to talk about maybe do a vlog about just let me know in the comments below and uh thank you guys for supporting the channel so much recently i got some good feedback on the last video and i hope you guys had a merry christmas uh happy holidays to everyone hope you guys spent some good time with your family I know my family's over in Florida, or my mom and dad, and my grandparents went over there, so I'm going to go hang out with my uncle and aunt this weekend, so that's going to be cool.